All right, welcome back to All Cars Y'all. I am John. It is time for another Motor Week Retro Review Reaction. This week it is the 1988 Mazda 929. Now, I, this one isn't released too long ago. I kind of noticed it, and uh, then I was requested by one of my viewers to do this one, and, well, I had to agree. Not my favorite body style, I'll be honest with you, but I'm excited to see, well, what was the top-of-the-line Mazda like in 1988? So, as always... Grab your beverage of choice. Let's sit down and take a trip down memory lane to 1988. It's made possible by Lucas Oil, Auto Value and Bumper to Bumper, and TireRack.com. Japanese car manufacturers have long based their reputation on low-profit, high-volume economy cars. But Korean successes in that once exclusive market have forced the Japanese to look upmarket for their continued prosperity. Honda has led the way with their Acura line. And now Mazda joins the fray with a new larger sedan than 929. But can a company whose reputation is based on making fun to drive little cars, not to mention a sports car, now make a big car? Well, that's, that's very interesting. I'm going to go back just a tiny bit there so you can see it. Looks like he's just filming this at a dealership. That's that's kind of cool. But um, interesting, he blames the Koreans there um, for the the makes moving up market. Uh, it was really more of the voluntary uh, import restrictions that the Japanese agreed to uh, to move up market for higher level profits. I'm not sure that the what was it 85 86 introduction of the um, Excel really was the impetus there. But anyway, uh, and it's interesting to think that in 88 here, um, Mazda, Toyota, and Nissan were all working on launching their luxury brands. Now, of course, Toyota got Lexus, uh, uh, Nissan got Infiniti, and Mazda got hit with the debt crisis and couldn't launch the Amati brand, uh, which is great, great shame. Um, but... 929, uh, interest, you know, boring, generic, late 80s Japanese car. Um, not a looker, not extremely stunning looking, but I will say it looks, fr from this specific profile, especially that belt line and where the trunk is, looks a touch Audi-ish to me. It really does. But let's see what they say. There's no doubt that the 929 is a big car. At 193 inches long, over 66 inches wide, and a wheelbase as long as the Ford Taurus, it's easily the biggest car in the Mazda inventory. But it's by no means an entirely new model. The 929 has been sold in Japan as the loose for a number of years, and it outsells the Acura Legend sedan in the Japanese luxury car market. That's really interesting. That, first off, this, it's a much bigger car than I expected. The Taurus, to me, always looked big. But then there were some cars, like this one, obviously, and the Eagle Premier, that although dimensionally they were quite large cars, they always looked a little bit smaller. I never would have placed this um, anywhere close to that large. Uh, I always thought it was a 626, slightly bigger Um Anyway, uh, styling, front styling, okay. Honestly, you tweak a couple of things, eh, it looks like a Nissan. Um, interesting, it sells, outsells uh, in its home market. I just, I don't know, it's, it's, it's okay, it's just, I, I like the later ones, I guess. But this is, this is okay, it looks honest. The word I'm looking for is it looks like an honest car. It's just car. But Mazda really wants to beat European and American models here. And to that end, the 929 has been given a rather European skin. Unfortunately, it's one of the blandest Euro stylings that we've seen from any Japanese company. Yeah, not, not their high point. I mean, if you look at the side view there, and then you look at... It, it, it not only looked ever so slightly Audi-ish, but like the proportions were a little dorkier. Um, also, it looked ever so slightly Volvo, like, 740-ish. Um, I don't know, just, it, it's not a very exciting-looking car. 
The only real character is in the front end, with its flush, rounded light assemblies and unique cheese cutter grill. The 929's power comes from a strong, silent, 3-liter single overhead cam V6 that produces 158 horsepower and 170 pound-feet of torque. Japanese home market cars get a variety of engines, including the RX-7 Turbo's 180 horsepower rotary power plant. The V6 provides easy maintenance thanks to the 929's roomy engine bay, but it is very busy with hoses and wires everywhere. And as in most Japanese cars, the fluid reservoirs are rather poorly marked. That V6 pushed the rear drive 929 from zero to 60 in a very respectable 9.4 seconds. Off the line torque is strong. The quarter mile ended in 17.3 seconds at 80 miles per hour. Again, quite good for any sedan. It's amazing how far technology has come. Um, you know, we're looking at a slightly more than nine second zero to 60, and that's totally reasonable, respectable. And I saw something the other day, and they were talking about a, a car that took like seven seconds, and they were talking about how slow it was. You know, like slow, like you've got to plan ahead when merging with traffic slow. And you, 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 man, you all need to go drive like some 83 cars or something to get some perspective here. But, you know, decent for a big sedan, decent enough. It's not a sports sedan. This is not a, uh, a Maxima, right? Um, I'd be curious to know how the Maxima did, but it does seem, while it's respectable, it does seem disappointing for how, how much they talked about the V6. Um, I'm not sad that Mazda didn't try to bring over the RX-7's, uh, rotary. I, I'm just not a rotary fan. I just, I, they haven't worked. They, they haven't been reliable for decades. Let, let's just give up on it. Um, but just not an exciting car. I mean, there's no other way around it. Respectable is a good word. We also have nothing but praise for the smooth, electronically controlled, four-speed overdrive automatic transmission. It shifts as gently as any we've tried. The five-speed manual from the RX-7 is also available. There is a hold feature that keeps the automatic transmission in your choice of first, second, or third gear. And you can vary the shift points for economy or power. A variety of dash indicators lets you know your selections and what gear you're in at the moment. Standard four-wheel disc brakes bring the 929 down from 55 with distances averaging 110 feet. All stops are straight and solid with good pedal feel and almost no fade. Four-speed automatic, um, ability to lock out, uh, have a sport mode, solid stuff. Solid stuff, exactly what I would expect from, from Mazda, honestly. Um, and then, granted that was from 55, but 110 feet, fantastic. You're, that, that's, that's a fantastic result, it feels like. And nice and smooth and straight is what it looked like, too. There is a slight tendency for the front to lock up, but it's easy to control. Anti-lock brakes are available as an option, but they must be purchased with Mazda's auto adjusting suspension system. You won't need it if you want a smooth American style ride. However, if you want your big Japanese car to pretend it's European, then its variable shock absorbers are a must. But regardless, it will not mask the mostly luxury tuning of the 929 suspension. There is substantial body roll and front end push through corners, but control is easy. On twisty roads, the 929 feels as secure as most of its competition. But with too little road feel coming through the steering and a steering pump that can't keep up with quick turns, emergency maneuvers can be unsettling. But the 929's interior makes you forget about its lazy road manners. For a rear drive car, there's a lot of room here. The dash is handsome and the standard analog gauges are comprehensive and easy to read. Unfortunately, their layout means that the steering wheel blocks the driver's view of both volt and temperature gauges. An electronic digital unit is an option. Um, interesting. So they, they've got a, a car, and obviously it was a home market car that, I don't know the history of the, the, the platform this is based on, how old it is. This feels old to me. You know what I mean? Um, rear wheel drive, it just feels old, uh, but gussied up and, and improved for the years. And, you know, 
I don't know. I'm just, I'm not excited about this car. That's what it boils down to. I'm trying to find nice things to say, and I'm having trouble. It, it feels like an old platform, an old design, and while it sells well, apparently, in Japan, I'm having trouble see why. Um, red seats, red interiors. I, I'm so glad red interiors are gone, but at least they did something expressive, right? They're not all boring black like we see today. This is a mess of a dash. Now, to put a positive spin on it, it does take the Japanese approach of big, big sections of plastic all formed at the same time. And I got to admit, I kind of dig the instrument cluster being longer horizontally and, and having more gauges. I think that's kind of cool. But the number of buttons and then three vents, <laughs> yeah, and then this mess beneath it and then the radio and it just is all choppy and chopped up it strikes me as an older dash if you just showed me a picture of this dash i would say that this was from the early 80s um early early mid like 84 uh not an 88 model overall so far just really really disappointing we are also disappointed in the plastic plugs in the dash the Japanese still haven't learned that such things have no place in a top-line car. But the front bucket seats are firm but comfortable with good lower back support. The standard manual controls include height and lumbar adjustments. A six-way power seat is also available and comes standard if you order the optional leather seats. But a tilt steering wheel is standard. And true to Japanese form, there is a high level of standard equipment on the 929, including a cassette stereo, it features a Toyota-like graphic equalizer that is preset for different kinds of music. Automatic air conditioning is also standard. Unfortunately, the controls are a little confusing. There are just too many buttons to push. Automatic climate control. That's really cool. That's a nice touch. I kind of like the equalizer. Those are, those are cool. I kind of miss those. But just all the ergonomics here just look like an absolute mess to me. In the rear, wide opening doors allow easy entry to a spacious and comfortable seat wide enough for three adults, even on long trips. And outboard shoulder belts are standard. We also liked its rear windows that roll all the way down, something most U.S. competitors can't manage. You know what, and that's worth mentioning. Um, this comes up every once in a while. You see it, and it always bothers me why people, sometimes it's the where the rear wheel is, and there's just not space to get the window down. But you do see cars where they've got the door space, and they just don't bother to make it all the, go all the way down. And it feels like a we get to save 10 cents per car by not doing it that way. You know, they spoke rather highly of the rear seat there, but it looked kind of tight to me. Honestly, I mean, he, he had room between his knees and the back of the front seat, but when he sat there with his legs, they, they were up under the seat. I, it, I don't know. I, I think they're being fair to this car. I really do. Of course, a full load of adults will need space for their things. Well, the 929 has luggage space in spades. The remote opening trunk is wide and deep with a very low liftover. The Mazda 929 is EPA rated at 19 city, 23 highway. We manage 20 miles per gallon on our mixed test loop. As for price, the 929 starts at $18,950. Our test car comes to $19,769 with options. As for competition, the Mercedes-Benz 190 costs much more, but it does offer better handling and more refined styling. The Pontiac 6000 STE cost about the same, but has a little less power. It does, however, offer anti-lock brakes as standard equipment and handles... I, I, I'm glad they gave two competitors. You know, they don't always do it through the years. The Mercedes, that's a hard... That's hard to compare, especially when they mentioned the Acura at the beginning. Why not compare it apples to apples with what it's beating in the home market? Um, there's zero doubt in my mind... I would choose the Acura over this. Uh, this just isn't stylish enough. It just, it's okay. We'll, we'll have some final thoughts in a minute. Compared to the, the, the Mercedes, I'd much rather have the Mercedes, but it's much, much more expensive. So for a price comparison, the Pontiac 6000, um, there is zero doubt in my mind 
that this Mazda will last longer than that Pontiac. But there's also zero doubt in my mind that Pontiac is going to be more fun to drive. That was that was a good car, and it was a little underappreciated. Didn't love the interior, but that was a the six thousand was a good car. Um, not as boring. It's a little more extroverted than this Mazda, but that was a good car. In our safety check, the 929 passes with rear shoulder belts, 5 mile per hour bumpers, and radial tires. It lacks front passive restraints, and anti lock brakes are available only as an option. But it's the 929's long list of standard features that tops our list of hits. That's closely followed by good braking performance, an exceptionally quiet ride, a roomy interior, and generous trunk space. Misses are the anonymous styling, mediocre handling, and some poorly thought out interior details. Despite what Mazda's ads suggest, the 929 is far more a luxury car than a sports sedan. We doubt it will sway many fanciers of European makes. It should do best among current owners of Japanese imports, and with American Luxo buyers who are looking for an alternative to overstuffed pillow interiors and battering ram fenders. But most importantly, the 929 proves that a maker of superior small and sporty cars can also build a reasonable big car. That fact alone should make the future of big car design in America far more interesting. They were, they were being extremely overly fair there at the end. Um, I see no compelling reason except for maybe price to buy this from any direction in the market and it pains me to say that i really liked mazdas uh the, you know the old 323 was a great and slightly underappreciated small car I, I truly believe it was as good as a, a honda civic in many of its generations uh and would would prefer the mazda in many cases um the 626 was very very good but just never quite as appreciated as the the Accord and the Camry, or you know, even the Stanza, and then later the Altima. Um, the 929, it, it got better, and the later ones were really good, but Mazda never quite reached excellence with it. Um, now, the Amati, when it was canceled, they did have the one of those basically done. Uh, the millennia, and when they released it, it was a revelation to me. I absolutely loved it. I loved basically everything about it. Uh, it's one of my favorite cars that I drove back in the in the nineties. Um, but this car is just there's nothing there. I, I mean, if you're coming from a price perspective, I, I do think the Pontiac would be better because the Pontiac's not trying to truly be a luxury car. This isn't a luxury car, and it's interesting that they got not the top level. As so often you see journalists like, we are testing the tippy-tippy top of what's actually available in this car, and they didn't. They didn't have the leather seats and the power seat and uh, the uh, analog brakes and the adjustable suspension and all this other stuff. It was just car. And it leaves me very cool for it. I don't like it. If you start to think about this as it's a competitor to Acura and it's more of a luxury car, I'd rather have a Volvo than this thing because at least it's honest about what it is. I'd rather have, in many ways, a one of the small Cadillacs or an Acura. Um, this car doesn't do it for me, and I'm really surprised. I chose this because... I have such a fond memory of the 626 and some of the 929s, and I thought this was going to be one of those hidden gems that I just wasn't old enough to appreciate when it was new. And turns out, I don't feel like I really missed anything. Let me know your thoughts below, guys. Thanks for being here.